afternoon guys, welcome to my channel and today we are in La Paz, Bolivia so this vlog will be dedicated to Bolivia in general Bolivia is a very beautiful and unique country not only it's home to absolutely stunning and marvelous nature spots like Salar de Uyuni it also has very unique and very good, um, somehow relatively unknown on the international scene food. A lot of people are wearing uh, traditional outfits in the streets where I haven't seen in many countries around the world. And it's home to the highest uh, capital in the world. So in other words, it's a very cool place. We're gonna spend um, in total like three and a half days in La Paz. We are actually pretty battered now because we um, departed from Cusco at um, something like 9 p.m. Uh, we had a connecting flight um, through Lima and then we took a 1 a.m. flight from Lima to La Paz, arrived in La Paz at 3.40 a.m. and then uh, it got complicated because the security line at La Paz airport is insanely long. I don't know, it's taking ages. A lot of people don't have the necessary documents with them. Basically, at the border control, if you are from one of the countries that are exempt from the visas, luckily both of us were, you need to provide um, travel insurance, uh, PCR test, um, um, vaccination certificate, um, then you need to provide your return flight and hotels, and there is not I, don't, I couldn't, there is technically internet in La Paz airport, but I couldn't connect, so I can't tell you if it works because it didn't work for me. So <laughs> a lot of people don't have it downloaded and hence it takes ages for the agents to process. And even if you have everything at hand, it still takes about probably like five to 10 minutes to process every single person at the border. So yeah, it um, takes, takes a while. Um, we were not the first ones in line and um, hence we had to wait a little bit um, then we were trying to extract money from the ATMs when we were trying to buy a SIM card that took uh, unexpectedly long we got it um, unfortunately there is no affordable roaming like there was in Peru with Vodafone and other like European providers so we had to buy a SIM card to use data um, that took probably like another half an hour so we only arrived at our hostel slash hotel at like 5.30 a.m. Uh, went to sleep almost immediately and woke up at 11. Uh, so um, obviously it took a bit, took a while to fall asleep. By the way, we stayed at a Hotel Selina, uh, Selina La Paz. Uh, it, it's very affordable. We paid for this private room something like £19 a night. Uh, we booked it for two nights just because even though we needed the hotel literally from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. today, we had to book two nights, but it wasn't too expensive. So it was just around £38 plus our Expedia discount, um, so yeah, it was pretty affordable, so we decided to book it for two nights uh, to be able to have a little bit of comfort today at least. Our bus departs at 8pm, we are taking night bus to uni, and then from uni we'll be basically flying back to La Paz. So let's go out and explore, we have actually a restaurant reservation, I'm gonna tell you a bit more about that restaurant later, um, so stay tuned, let's go! So La Paz has a lot of traffic and really busy roads even during the non-peak hours so for example at uh, 2 p.m. on Saturday so it took us around 20 minutes uh, to get to the southern part or the lower part of La Paz uh, a slightly more affluent area where a lot of restaurants are located and we were visiting the restaurant called Gusto so this restaurant was opened by uh, the same guy who opened the famous Noma restaurant in Copenhagen which uh, has been taking the first place in the list of the top restaurants in the world so naturally we were really really curious about Gusto and it didn't disappoint uh, the drinks were really unique and the dishes were super super unique as well so we had to ask um, the waiter pretty much about every single dish despite the fact that Pepe is fluent in Spanish just because the ingredients were really, really unique they were so sourced from all the different regions of Bolivia from Altiplano to the Amazon jungle and generally it was a great experience and it wasn't even expensive so happy to breathe 
especially when you need to climb some stairs. After having a lunch and gusto, we took a taxi back to the city center uh, to walk around and see um, the most touristic parts of La Paz. So La Paz, unfortunately, doesn't have a very large and um, historical city center because a lot of historical um, buildings, especially colonial buildings from um, the Spanish times, were destroyed, um, demolished uh, in most cases, because it's really, really expensive to maintain them. So people who owned these buildings just decided to um, get rid of them and build something more practical and more cheap in exploitation, um, which unfortunately is a bit sad because it means that a lot of heritage was lost. However, there is one street of La Paz that is protected. Unfortunately, it's literally just one street that is uh, protected by, I'm not sure by whom, um, probably by the government, uh, and it is called Calle Jaén. And it's a really, really beautiful street with a lot of colorful buildings. And um, yeah, it's basically not allowed to demolish any buildings or pretty much change anything on this street. So. We actually found a nice little travel agency in a small street, in a small lovely street and purchased some tours for the 23rd of April uh, but now we decided that we, we are feeling a little bit better, especially me uh, we was feeling okay from the very beginning and we'll try, we'll try to go up here the, I don't know if you can see it to the Mirador Kirikiri Kirikiri? Yep Yeah, so we're gonna try to go there and see the beautiful, beautiful view of the city from up there, basically. Wish us luck because, you know, every step in La Paz is a challenge. Which way? Such beautiful views you can see from the Mirador. I hope you didn't get dizzy because I did. And the altitude makes it worse. But well, I feel like I'm always complaining about the altitude and I didn't see many people complaining in a lot of our vlogs I've watched. So maybe it's just uh, my issue. <laughs> But that could happen. Some Somehow we picked the same route as the um, trash and bin collection service of La Paz. Uh, yet the sound you've heard uh, was the the truck, um, a very melodic truck. So we actually quite enjoyed walking next to it, um, but unfortunately the smell wasn't the best as you can imagine.
just randomly walked in and walked into a restaurant called Mankia, Manke, um, which is apparently mentioned in the top 50 of Latin American restaurants, which is really, really nice. And the prices are in high, so really happy about that. We are pretty hungry, to be fair. I suspect this little place was here and it closed. Palambre. Just have it, let's see. Maybe it tastes is it like a. Oh, it's warm. Like a. Returning from Salar de Uyuni, we uh, stayed in another part of La Paz, in a part uh, located in the southern or lower La Paz called Achumani. And we stayed in the Hotel Met, which was recently opened uh, just about two and a half months ago, um, as of basically April 2022. Feels like we are the only guests in the hotel. So we moved, um, we finally got out of the room, that's already an achievement. So today we, we had an excursion planned, but they just couldn't um, find enough people, unfortunately, so um, it was cancelled. So instead, so instead um, we basically got a free day in La Paz and we have another free day in La Paz, so we don't have that much to do. We'll try to explore and see and walk around, but we just didn't want to leave the hotel at like 9 a.m. and spend the entire day in the city because we have an excursion at 6 p.m. and we just didn't want to get too tired. So we're currently in the kind of slightly posher area of La Paz and uh, it's interesting to walk around to see how different it is from the central of La Paz and from El Alto where we are going tomorrow um, on the excursion. Today is a, such a warm day in La Paz, it's 21 degrees, but it kind of feels hotter. Um, at the same time, it's also kind of fresh because of the altitude, um, but it is quite dangerous in terms of, uh, kind of sun radiation. So we applied loads of sunscreen. Um, hopefully we won't get burned. Um, probably we won't because we've been here for about seven days now in South America. We're currently heading to the city center for the tour. So the tour is at 6, uh, it's 4 currently, so hopefully we'll be able to make it in 2 hours using public transport. So we're heading to the Teleferico station, which is the closest one to our hotel. It's, uh, I think, roughly 18 minutes walking. Um, yeah, it's a nice walk. One thing that makes La Paz super, super unique is Teleferico. So La Paz is currently the only city in the world where Teleferico is like embedded in a proper transport network and pretty much replaces Metro. So this is the Metro of La Paz. There are currently 10 lines um, in the La Paz Teleferico network, but there are plans to build a bit more lines. And 
So at the time we were, when we were taking Teleferico, it was pretty much empty. Um, we were lucky, but during the rush hours on the weekdays, it gets pretty full, although not as full as you can imagine. So one cabin accommodates up to 10 people, but it doesn't get that crowded. Um, so a lot of drivers told us that even during the busiest times, uh, the waiting times to get inside Teleferico oh doesn't usually exceed around 10 minutes. And during the not so busy times, basically there is no waiting time at all. Probably um, the longest thing um, that you need to do is to buy tickets and sometimes there is a queue to buy the tickets. It currently costs five bolivianos for a single ride, um, which requires an interchange and a bit less, I think three and a half for a single ride that doesn't um, include interchange to another line. So that makes it a little bit more expensive that, than the minibuses. Uh, it usually costs around two bolivianos for a single ride in a minibus and you can go basically as far as you want. And if you go from the northern part to like Achumani, uh, for example, it costs a little bit more, two and a half uh, or something like that, depending on the minibus. So a lot of people, because of that, um, because, I mean, it racks up, it adds up, uh, a lot of people prefer to use minibuses instead of Teleferico. So we finally made it to the city center. In total, it took us about 45 minutes, including a 17-minute walk from the hotel to the nearest uh, uh, Teleferico station. Uh, right now we are in the most touristic part of the city, in the city center, and we are going to one of the most popular attractions of La Paz to the uh, Mercado de las Brujas or the Witcher's Market. I'm not sure if it's actually open. Is it? Do you think it's open? Yes, I think it's Okay, all right. Let's, let's, let's check it out. If it's not, then we can return here tomorrow in the morning, probably. So Mercado de las Brujas is one of the most uh, popular touristic places in La Paz. Uh, before, many years ago, it used to be a very, very authentic place where a lot of um, locals would go to to do some rituals. Uh, but right now, um, the proper market has moved to El Alto. So there is the street of Las Brujas there. And this part here is mostly touristic. So we've been walking around, but we couldn't find actually anything pretty much. So Pepe is Googling right now to kind of find the exact location of where we can find Las Brujas stalls. But maybe it's actually closed. Maybe it's just too late. Проходили тут вокруг, но пока ничего не нашли. Сейчас Хаса гуглит, пытается найти, где конкретное местоположение всех необычных э, торговых рядов для ведьм. In the end, we managed to find it, although, of course, it's not as large as it used to be before COVID, because even though um, Bolivia has reopened for tourists, it's still a bit strict with the COVID rules, so it doesn't have that many tourists coming. So there are very, very few stalls that are currently open. Basically, if you Google Mercado de las Brujas, uh, it points you to the street and all you need to do is basically walk towards the end of the street and you will find these uh, remaining stalls. So what you can find there, basically a lot of souvenirs you can buy for your friends. These are kind of like um, blessed soaps or uh, sweets that were kind of blessed for specific reasons, for like finding love or a new job. You can find um, a little deceased uh, Llama baby or llama fetus and yeah a lot of things and even do some rituals but um, I mean obviously that's not really our thing so we just walked around and looked at the stalls but the real thing is located in El Alto and at 6 p.m. we had a food tour. So basically our tour included visiting a lot of different street food market stalls in Mercado Lanza. Mercado Lanza is one of the biggest and one of the most interesting food markets in La Paz. It's basically located right um, in the city center uh, next to the San Francisco church and um, don't let it deceive you because the first two floors are not related to food. So you need to take the stairs and climb up, uh, especially on a busy weekday, and you'll see a lot of different food stalls. So this is like um, warm purple corn? You know, it's thicker than the chichamala, yeah, it's like purple corn. So it's warm, I guess, with sugar. Okay. Maybe it's like atole from Mexico, so it's warm. Yeah. Atole? Yeah, it's like corn. Like these things I sometimes prepare, very thick. Uh -huh. 
after trying a few dishes in Mercado Lanza, we headed to a small local restaurant where our guide ordered like five huge dishes for us. Salchipancha, ¿no? Salchipancha. Salchipancha. Es la carne plana. Es carne de res, ¿verdad? De vaca. Sí, es que agarran con una piedra. Es por la... Porque tiene... Chairo. Tiene... Este... Perejil. Okay. Le pone mucho parsley. parsley. This has a lot of parsley. Esto es tomate, uh -huh. perdón, cebolla, eh, onion, uh -huh. with chile, uh -huh. uh, it's mixed. We call it pico de gallo in Mexico, I think, I guess. Uh, okay. Like onion, chile, and tomato, right? Uh -huh. What's the name of this one? This is fricasse. Uh, fricasse? It's sacta. Sacta. What is the sacta? Is sacta is the dried potato. Dried potato. Oh, those are the dehydrated Pino. potatoes. Ah, okay. Maní, oh, wow, well, okay. Y lleva una salsa de picante que es ají, el chile, el eh, tomate óleo y este es el, el pollo, cocido y la carne. Uh, we have a tour of Teleferico, even though we took Teleferico yesterday to get to the city center. Um, hopefully we'll learn a bit more about the city, uh, history of the city and also visit El Alto, uh, which we wanted to visit for so long already. So yeah, that's the main chat. of that it's, uh, it's been a business that has grown a lot in the last 10 years that's why all the buildings are so new and if you see between the streets if you have the chance to see that you will see you will see markets everywhere Bis uh, family business the family lives there and at the same time they work there they sell this, this uh, commercial activity is a uh, uh, is uh, done by the whole family. Mm -hmm. So it's, we are talking about family business. So we see the lady there, mm -hmm. she lives. Mm -hmm. So we heard that uh, the, 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 most of the house look incomplete because of yes. the tax. Yes, an incomplete house is a cheaper tax. Oh. This cemetery is one of the oldest in La Paz. Here are buried the most important characters of Bolivian history. by Teleferico and you are in El Alto, one of the tallest cities in the world. So El Alto is located at the altitude of over 4,000 meters above the sea level. So it's really, really tall. But every Thursday and every Sunday, there is uh, one of the largest markets in um, South America. You can buy pretty much everything there and a lot of people even dress up to come to this market um, wear some of their most beautiful clothes especially um, cholitas um, these ladies in um, very interesting brown hats and um, uh, very beautiful kind of purple skirts they uh, often wear some of their most beautiful um, outfits um, just to attend the market and be seen by their i don't know friends families and acquaintances 
of course you've got to be careful at this market every single taxi driver warned us about that and told that he knows someone or one of his family members or he personally lost something in the market uh, a phone got stolen or even actually the hat got stolen because this hat's expensive in case you decide to come to visit the market, make sure to leave some of your most valuable things at home and do not um, you know, carry your phone in your hands because it might get snatched. Uh, does um, not mean it will get snatched, but it could be. So the market is so huge. We will see later how huge it is uh, from the Teleferico. But basically you can spend the entire day walking around. And one of the taxi drivers told us that every um, kind of market day, basically every Sunday, Sunday is the biggest market day, um, there are things sold for over $150 million. So there are sections of different things in the market. So there is a section of clothes, there is a section of even cars, even cattle, um, food, electronics, um, building supplies, anything you can think of. And yeah, it's definitely huge 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 we only spent about um, 10 minutes walking around there but it's definitely worth spending more time if you want to buy something Sundays and Thursdays. Only Sundays and Thursdays. A free cafe presence in all these aspects. Okay? So these two ladies were Chalitas. Uh, Chalitas are basically indigenous uh, women of the city. They are wearing these outfits because they are proud to be indigenous and there is a long history behind these outfits. Basically, when the Spanish came in the 17th century, they made all the indigenous people wear these outfits. And since the indigenous women adopted these outfits, now since then, they haven't really changed these outfits at all. And they have um, been wearing them since then and proudly wearing because it means they are indigenous women um, from the city of La Paz or El Alto. drinking a local drink, Pircir Vecina, uh, mixed together with eggs and sugar, um, kind of, in total it gets you something that, similar to the butter beer in Harry Potter, World of Adventures, whatever, um, and we are eating the famous caldo de Cardan, Cardan caldo de Cardan, the bull, penis and testicles soup, which is actually very tasty, but it's told to be that it, it's thought to be an aphrodisiac, but To me, it tastes like, um, well, meat soup with potato, <laughs> rice, and some well, broth.
Another very, very popular dish in Bolivia is la saltenia. So basically it's like an empanada, a, a tiny pie with a filling. It's either uh, some sort of meat or it could be vegetarian like mine. Um, and there are so many YouTube videos that show how to um, eat a saltenia properly. But um, I haven't watched any of that. So on the, ex on the example of Pepe, we're going to show you how to eat a saltenia. I'm probably going to get dirty as well. Like a green cali, so yeah. Hmm. Make a small hole. Stay thin. Mm. You said a drink, is that Daniel? No. Huh? You drink it? It has juices, yes. Look, there is like a soup inside. Mm. And it tastes like minestrone. And the last thing we wanted to visit uh, was basically Elado uh, de Canela or the Canela ice cream. That ice cream was featured in the Netflix documentary of the street food and we just couldn't miss it. We had to visit it and it was really, really nice. It tasted very un unusual. So it tasted like cinnamon, but it looked really red, uh, which was super unusual. Sí, no Muchas gracias. Hola, Canela. No, 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 its end and we actually decided to take a small break, break and relax and visit the Juan Valdez coffee which is a nice Colombian coffee chain and this Juan Valdez coffee is located inside a shopping mall so this is how uh, the shopping mall in La Paz looks like it's nice and uh, this doesn't have a lot of kind of international brands people are used to and in the best location there is Zara but there are some brands that you probably know like Levi's, Dockers, United Post, Benetton Adidas, yeah, a lot of those. So that was La Paz in a nutshell. To be fair, we really, really liked the city. It was so nice to learn a bit more about Aymara culture and language. And I hope you guys also enjoyed this video and see you guys in the next one. The next video will be from Salar de Uyuni. Bye bye.